If you're using Ableton Live on an Apple Silicon Mac, in today's tutorial, I'm gonna share everything I know about optimizing your experience with Ableton Live on your computer. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So glad you're here. I've been using an Apple Silicon Mac for, I guess the past two years, basically about a month since it came out. Uh, and I've got an M1 Mac mini. Uh, it's super powerful. It's such a great machine. It's probably the best computer that I've had in a long time. But I have found that it, there's a couple things you've got to get just right uh, to use Ableton Live successfully. And I've seen this replicated in um, the From Studio Stage students and feedback I get from them about shows they're on and how they're using Ableton Live. So again, I want to share everything I personally know and have found about using uh, um, Ableton Live on Apple Silicon Mac. I've got five really quick things that I want to share with you. The first one is one I've talked about before on this channel. You need to set your buffer size to uh, 256 or lower. 256 or lower really is a sweet spot, and here's why. Let's go into Ableton Live. First off, let me show you how to do this if you've never set your buffer size before. So I've got Ableton Live open. I'm gonna open Live's preferences, which is Command, comma. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's uh, Control, comma. Uh, and we wanna go to the Audio tab here. So we're gonna click on the Audio tab, and we're talking about buffer size. Now, again, like I mentioned, in order to have the best experience on Apple Silicon Mac, you need to be at 256 samples or lower. So honestly, what I suggest doing is starting on 32 samples. And if you have audio clicks, drops, and pop-outs, you can raise that if you want to. Uh, but I would start on 32 samples. But the important point here uh, that I have to stress is whatever you choose, you've got to make sure that you're lower than 256 samples. And this is kind of... Um, uh, uh, the opposite of what I've taught in the past. Previously before, if you've had dropouts on your computer, I've said raise your buffer size. And that's how non-Apple Silicon Macs work and other computers that are not using Apple Silicon. So if you're having issues, uh, your computer's you know doesn't have enough power, raise your buffer size and it's gonna run better. It's actually the inverse on Apple Silicon. And here's why, really quickly, I just wanna share why that, that is in, in fact. So on Apple Silicon Macs, we essentially have two different cores, right? We have a performance core and we have a efficiency core. And I do wanna stress, this is not a scenario where uh, this is not a bug. This is just the way that Apple machines work. Uh, I thought of this again initially as a bug and I thought I can't wait till Ableton gets in and fixes this. It's not a bug, it's the way that Apple Silicon machines work. And so this is the world we'll be living in for a while. So we have a performance core and efficiency core. Now, obviously for us, performance core is the most important thing because it gives us the absolute best power, right? We're dedicating everything to power. Efficiency is all about power saving, right? It's all about uh, battery life. Uh, imagine being in a, a coffee shop, a cafe, working on email, what's important to you in that moment is power saving. You're working on your battery. You don't wanna to use tons of power, but for us on stage, we want more power. It's like Tim the Tool Man Taylor, right? Throwback uh, uh, to the 90s there. Um, it's more power, that's what we're after. And so the way this kind of works when we're um, using this live on stage, is we, we press play in Ableton Live, and right, we have some maybe uh, some some peaks. Uh, we're kind of using our, our power here, but we get to a certain port, a point in our song, uh, maybe we pause our set, Ableton sits idle for a little bit, um, and we basically have a, a slight dip to where we don't really need that much power anymore. And our computer has these two cores, and in order to work more efficiently, uh, Apple goes, oh, we detected that uh, we're, we're dropping down here. We don't need tons of power. Let's kick you over to the efficiency core. Again, when you're working in a cafe in a coffee shop, that's really great. When you're on stage, that's terrible because what happens is in this moment when we drop over um, uh, and switch over to the efficiency core, we get dropouts. And this happens a lot on Apple Silicon Macs unless you're running 256 buffers or lower. So there's your little kind of history uh, lesson on how Apple, uh, Apple Silicon machines work. You can avoid those issues if you run your buffer size of 256 uh, or lower. Now, the second thing, I would suggest use Ableton Live 11.2 or open your files in 11.3 if you're on 11.3 or higher and resave them. I have found in, in talking with a lot of my students, personally, I'm still on, I believe 11.2.7 is the latest version I'm on currently. Um, I have not upgraded to 11.3 because of this. And 11.3, they redo the warping algorithm. They also uh, uh, kind of force this rescan of .asd files. And so because of that, I've seen, um, and this has been replicated across lots and lots of students, I've seen 
longer load times. Ableton seems to just take forever to open files up. But what we've seen to discover uh, is it happens to be related to 11.3, something with 11.3, um, and it goes away. If you open your file, and once it's open, you resave it in an 11.3 file. So again, two options here is just use live 11.2 or open your files and save them in 11.3. And this technically I don't think is related to Apple Silicon, but again, it, you're, if you're on Apple Silicon, that's something you're gonna have to deal with and think about. The other thing is always use collect all and save. Always use collect all and save. Essentially what collect all and save is, again, I'm gonna use my fancy Apple Pencil here, is if you think about uh, your live set. So we have an Ableton Live file, and I'm bringing a lot of different samples from across my computer into my Ableton set. Well, when I save that, um, those files are not saved into my set. They stay right where they were on my desktop, okay? But what Collect All and Save does is it takes, okay, here's our live folder. We're gonna bring our live uh, .als set into our live folder. When I do Collect All and Save, it's gonna go and do kind of a pickup here, pick up all of those samples and bring that into my live folder. Uh, and you'll see that, you'll look in your folder, you'll see what's called a samples folder. And that's where all those files are loaded. Now, um, this I, I've been teaching this for a very, very long time and, and basically have been saying you should do collect on save for a very long time. But I found on Apple Silicon, it's absolutely essential. Here's how you do it. Um, I'll show you exactly why, and then I'll share a little more of my experience with this. So what you wanna do is again, open Ableton Live. You wanna go up to the menu here. Uh, you wanna do file. And you'll see this option right here, collect all and save is the option that we're looking for. So we're gonna select that. Uh, and then we're going to select, um, personally again, what I found, most of the time I'm just leave these first three uh, highlighted. If you happen to be using files from factory packs, then enable that as well too. If not, you can leave it disabled and then you wanna click okay. And what that's essentially gonna do when you do that, uh, I don't actually need to save this, so I'll just hit cancel for now. But what that's gonna do is it's again, gonna go around on your computer like I showed here, grab those samples and bring all of those samples into your live project folder so they're in one location. It's really great when you're saving files, when you're sending files to other people. But what I've discovered on Apple Silicon is even if all of my files happen to be on my desktop and I move my Ableton session to create a new session on my desktop and I press play, I'll start to get audio dropouts, right? I'll start to run into issues and have issues with that. But if I do collect all and save and I make sure all my samples are in, again, that project folder and they're all together, um, I have found that I tend to have less issues. So even if you think you don't need to collect all and save on Apple Silicon Mac, I would try that. And I think you're probably going to have less issues doing that. Now, I have two other things I wanna share. Um, the, the next one is something that a From Studio Stage student pointed out to me. And at first I said, no, 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 that's not a thing. Then I tested it and tried it and realized, oh my gosh, it is. That's another kind of weird bug. But before I do that, I wanna to talk to you if you happen to be using Ableton Live on stage for performance. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're using Live on stage, we wanna take advantage of that performance core, right? So that's why we, we make the tweak of using 256 or lower to avoid audio dropouts. But if you're using Able to Live on stage, in particular, you're using Able to Live on stage for backing tracks, you wanna make sure you're doing that in a way that is efficient. You don't want it to take tons and tons of time. You wanna do it in a way that's stable. You don't want your computer to crash, have audio dropouts. You don't wanna have CPU overloads. And you wanna do it in a way that's flexible. If you're a band on stage, you wanna start uh, at a different part of the song in rehearsal, or if you wanna cut down your arrangement, you wanna be able to do that really quickly without saying, Okay, give me a moment. I gotta go back to the studio, open my session, redo things. I found the best way to do that is to use something I'll call the three-part framework for using tracks. And I've created a template that is formatted the exact way that you need to get started to run tracks in that way to take advantage of that. And you can get it completely for free by heading to from studio to stage.com slash template. This template works for Ableton Live 9, 10, 11, and higher. Ableton Live intro, standard and suite, works for Mac and PC as well. And you can, again, find that uh, by going to from studio stage.com slash template, download it for free. But when you do that, you're not gonna just get the template. You're also gonna get access to my six day email course, which is free where I show you exactly how to take that template, format your songs and load your songs into an Ableton Live set. It's the fastest way, it's the most efficient way, most stable. And again, to me, most important, the most flexible way to use tracks on stage. So if you're interested in that, again, completely free, then head to from studio to stage.com slash template to get access to that. 
plus to get access to my six day email course. Now, this next one, like I mentioned, um, is one that I had a from Studio Stage student, Sergio, reach out uh, earlier uh, and recently. And he said, hey, well, I'm having some issues where uh, I go and I add locators into my Ableton Live file. I'll show you if you've never done that before, how to do that. So I can go up here. Uh, let's go like up to the top part of Live. I can right click in what's called this scrub area here. And I can click on Add Locator, OK? And I can just type, uh, let's call this like Intro, OK? So again, in this scrub area where I see the speaker icon, I can right click and do add locator and uh, I can click it. Now let's call this verse, right? Uh, this is super important, super helpful. If you're working and using Ableton Live uh, for tracks on stage and you want to have access to individual different sections. But what Sergio pointed out to me, and at first I said, well, no, 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 Sergio, you're wrong on this. Uh, but what he realized uh, very appropriately and glad, you know, props and shout out to Sergio for finding this is if I have my Ableton live file open and I go to add these locators into my session and then I immediately go to press play, then what you're likely going to discover is you'll likely find that up here in this top right hand corner, uh, you'll start to see, oh, let me get my mouse back. You'll start to see this right here light up. And this is called your disk overload light. And typically that lights up whenever uh, your your disk can't, uh, in the olden days, spin fast enough. Now we have solid state drives, but your disk can't keep up with the amount of samples that you have running. Um, but what we discovered is we have the same amount of files in, we keep adding locators, we keep getting these audio dropouts. What in the world's happening? And eventually, again, I reached out to Sergio and I said, well, Sergio, you're wrong because locators don't add any sort of CPU overhead whatsoever. They're just markers. They're just points in data that say jump back to this section of the song. So I was a little confused at first, but then Sergio got back to me and he said, well, well, actually I discovered if after I add locators to my file, um, then I can go up to uh, my file menu up here. I can do file live, uh, save live set, save my Ableton live file. Then after I save it, I just go back up to here and I go to open recent set and I reopen the set that I just opened. So essentially if you save your set, and then reopen after adding locators. So that's our fourth tip is save your set and reopen your set after after adding locators. Then you will get rid of, if you happen to see this before, uh, you will get rid of these disk dropout areas. And again, if you've never seen this before uh, and are unfamiliar with where exactly this is, this is the upper right hand corner here. This will light up and say disk. Okay. So if you've been seeing that and uh, you happen to just add locators and then get it, the way around that again is to uh, add your locators, then save your file and reopen your file after adding locators. So again, props, shout out to Sergio and all the fantastic from Studio Stage community for constantly sharing tips and tricks and what they're learning so that I can learn also. Now, this next one is a general thing that I've seen. It's not necessarily about optimizing Ableton, but it's just a kind of like reminder to stop stressing about CPU. I'm in the middle right now of testing this process that I believe I found a way that I can tell you exactly how many tracks you can run on your Ableton set at once, how many songs you can have in your Ableton set at once, what your CPU limit of your Ableton set is without having to go through the process of, of building an entire set or figuring that out live on stage. And this has been really, really helpful. But as I'm going throughout all that, um, I'm reminded of most of us really freak out about our CPU. And so in the past, I've done a video just uh, trying to encourage people, stop worrying about CPU usage so much. But something I've discovered um, in Ableton Live on Apple Silicon Macs uh, is that CPU metering seems to be a little more sensitive. And I think this is both a combination of Apple Silicon Macs plus live um, uh, probably live 11 when we got these new CPU metering things. Uh, and again, if you're unfamiliar with this, I'll show you um, go into the upper right hand corner of live screen here. Uh, and you can go to this section here, which is our CPU metering. Um, we have the ability to enable or disable this, uh, see average or current. Uh, meter text shows average or current. Um, I would really suggest that you leave this set to just average. If you are experiencing audio dropouts, again, you're going to, uh, I think, see those solved by uh, what we talked about earlier, which is, again, dropping your buffer size to uh, to 256 or lower. That's going to solve that. But if, if you're kind of worried about it, you can certainly, again, go here and turn on warn on current CPU overload. But I would highly suggest that you leave this set to average. Uh, don't leave it set to current, because I think what you're going to see is um, a little more uh, hyperactive CPU experience, maybe is a good way to say that. Again, I've found the CPU tends to be, uh, seems to be 
a little more sensitive on Apple Silicon Mac, a little more sensitive on newer versions uh, of Ableton on Apple Silicon Mac. And I don't worry about CPU unless I'm having issues. Um, and so if your CPU is at 20% and you're worried, well, my question to you is, okay, what's happening? And if your only symptom is that your CPU is at 20%, you're perfectly fine. And again, uh, be on the lookout because again, soon I hope to release kind of the findings of that study and release that test publicly um, as I'm kind of validating the results of, with a few people that have jumped in to help. Uh, we'll, we'll get that figured out and share that with everyone so that you can see that as well too. But don't worry about your CPU. It tends to be a little more overactive, I would say, hyperactive on Apple Silicon. Um, so again, if you're using Apple Silicon, let me run through these one more time really quickly just to make sure you've got it. Number one, make sure you set your buffer size to 256 or lower. That's gonna keep your computer running on the performance core as opposed to the efficiency core, which is what we're after. I would suggest using Live 11.2 or um, once, if you wanna go ahead and go to 11.3, um, reopen your live files. Once they open, hit save uh, so that you have those and so that they load quickly. Uh, next thing is always do collect all and save. Again, I showed you earlier how to do that. I think that's just a good general principle to uh, apply and use uh, regardless. Next, again, if you're adding locators in your file, save and reopen your live file after adding locators. That'll get rid of um, kind of fake disk overload warnings that you're getting. Uh, and then finally, I found that CPU metering is uh, seems to be a little more sensitive on Apple Silicon. So um, I would suggest, again, disabling current, make sure you're on average and really don't stress about it until you need to stress about it. And what I mean by that is simply if you're having issues, worry about it. If not, don't worry about it at all. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope this has been beneficial to you. If you like it, do me a favor, hit subscribe uh, on YouTube, enable the bell icon so you see when I post new content. Um, all the free resources I mentioned in today's tutorial are available from studiotostage.com slash free. Thanks so much for watching everybody and we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye everybody.